Today, throughout the world, wherever there's earth to be moved, wherever there are logs to be hauled, wherever there are farms to be tilled, wherever there are roads to be built or kept clear of deep winter snows, wherever there's a need for mobile power which knows few obstacles, there, in all probability, you will find Caterpillar diesel equipment at work. For Caterpillar Tractor Company is the world's largest manufacturer of diesel engines, of track-type tractors and of road machinery. And there are reasons for such remarkable popularity. Reasons to be found in the engineering department where Caterpillar equipment is designed for long life and economical operation. Reasons at the proving grounds where day and night, year in and year out, Caterpillar equipment is put through its paces where bumps for the tractor tell how much she'll stand. And fuel tests prove economy. Reasons for Caterpillar popularity on the production line, where sturdiness and long life are built into the machines from the ground up. But that's only half the story. And the other half you'll find in these files. Here is accumulated the experience of thousands of Caterpillar owners. Here is the life history of every Caterpillar machine that's ever been built. Thousands of records for thousands of tractors, for thousands of engines. Because regularly, several times a year, there comes to these files a report on every Caterpillar machine in operation today. From all over the world they come. Reports made out by Caterpillar dealers everywhere, telling in detail how each machine they've sold is operating. And information gleaned from this wealth of experience has brought many an improvement to Caterpillar products, making them even sturdier, more economical, simpler to operate, easier to take care of. And with the aid of these files, Caterpillar Tractor Company has compiled operators' instruction books, complete, accurate guides to correct care and operation, condensed into short, readable booklets to tell you how to get the most out of your equipment. So you see, Caterpillar Tractor Company is doing everything possible to provide you with many thousands of hours of economical tractor life. And as for the rest, It's up to you. There's nothing delicate about a Caterpillar diesel tractor, but like every power-producing mechanism, it requires a certain amount of care and attention. For example, automobiles must be lubricated regularly and adjusted from time to time. But if you were to drive your automobile at 50 miles an hour, eight hours every day, and if you subjected it to the same conditions your tractor has to meet, your car would be completely worn out within a few months. Most of the time, your automobile is producing only about 50% or one half of its maximum power. But your tractor is called upon to supply more than 75% of its maximum power, nine-tenths of the time, and under much more difficult conditions. As a matter of fact, your tractor does more work in 10 hours of operation than your automobile does in 1,000 miles of driving. And so, your tractor deserves closer attention and more care than your automobile. One of the most important things in the care of your tractor is to keep dirt out of the tractor engine. To find out why, let's have a look at a Caterpillar fuel injection system. The fuel supply travels by gravity from the fuel tank to the fuel transfer pump. The transfer pump then forces it up through the fuel filter and into the fuel injection pumps. The pumps measure the fuel and force it through the injection valves where it's broken up into a fine spray and injected into the pre-combustion chamber. But if the fuel is dirty, if it contains even the smallest particles of sediment in any quantity, you're inviting trouble. Of course, the fuel filters help a lot, but when they're overworked, sediment collects on them in such quantities 
that some of it is likely to get through to the fuel injection pumps, where it quickly increases the clearance between the pump plunger and the barrel, causing fuel leakage, loss of pressure, and hard starting. This will finally require replacement of the pumps. But that isn't all, for the sediment travels along with the fuel to the injection valves, causing them to wear, and resulting in an uneven spray and poor combustion, which means hard starting and wasted fuel. Notice how unevenly this valve injects the fuel into the pre-combustion chamber. So if you're experiencing hard starting or loss of power, or if your engine is running irregularly or smoking, the fuel injection valve should be removed and tested. In doing this, first clean all dirt from around the valves using the brush supplied in the tool equipment. Disconnect the fuel injection lines and the fuel drain lines and remove the flange nuts which hold the valve in place. Then turn the valve upside down and connect it to the fuel lines again. Allow the starting engine to turn the diesel engine at a low idling speed. And with the diesel throttle wide open, watch the fuel spray that comes from the fuel injection valves. When the valves are in good condition, the spray is fine and uniform like this. But when the valves are worn by dirt and sediment, the fuel will be discharged in a solid stream or jet. Or it may come from only one side of the nozzle. Sluggish or uneven cutoff at the end of the spray is another sign of worn valves. And severe dribbling of oil from the nozzle is still another. So here's what the valve spray should look like. It should be fine and uniform, and if it's not, the valve is probably worn. The quality, that is the shape, regularity and evenness of the spray is determined by the valve, but the quantity of the fuel injected is determined by the pump. Notice that each valve is injecting an equal amount of fuel. Now watch the second valve from the right. The spray from it becomes weaker by comparison with the others, thus indicating that the pump supplying that valve is badly worn. So valves and pumps which are not operating correctly should be replaced. Replacing the valve is a quick, simple operation. And replacing the injection pump takes only a few minutes. But the wise operator will check with the instruction book before attempting these replacements to make sure he hasn't forgotten anything. For example, one of the important things to remember in replacing fuel pumps is the proper alignment of gear teeth with the marks on the pump rack and on the fuel pump housing. But this replacement of parts, made necessary by dirty fuel, can be avoided. All you have to do is buy clean fuel and keep it clean. Few enough are the engine difficulties for the man who owns a Caterpillar diesel, but most of those difficulties which do arise are the result of careless handling of fuel. And so the successful owner makes sure that the fuel he buys meets Caterpillar diesel fuel specifications and that it comes from a supplier who gives careful attention to keeping the fuel clean right up to the point of delivery. Notice how carefully this man cleans the top of the storage tank around the filler cap. He wipes off the hose nozzle to remove any dirt that may have collected on it. These precautions are important, but in spite of them, there is still likely to be some dirt in the fuel. That's because oil is heavy and viscous, and tiny, often invisible particles of dirt may remain suspended in it for a considerable period of time. But when the fuel is allowed to stand for a few hours, some of the dirt settles to the bottom of the tank. When 16 hours have passed, 
still more of the dirt has settled. And at the end of 24 hours, the fuel is almost completely clean. So the man who makes it a rule to allow at least 24 hours settling time has a greater assurance of getting clean fuel. Obviously, it's a good idea to pump the fuel from the tank. Handling the fuel in this fashion is not only the easiest way, but also the best. Because pumping the fuel does not disturb the sediment. And the sediment, in turn, can be drawn up through a valve at the bottom of the tank without disturbing the clean fuel above it. If mobile tanks are used, these should be thoroughly cleaned before each filling. And they should be filled from the stationary storage tank after the fuel has had time to settle. Barrels may be used for fuel storage, provided enough are kept on hand at one time to allow for settling. Fuel should always be pumped from them in order to avoid the use of transfer cans and funnels, since their oily surfaces are exposed to the air and pick up dust and dirt. But there's still another way dirt can cause trouble. Through the air your engine breathes. You can't breathe dust into your lungs and remain healthy, and neither can your tractor. That's why your tractor engine is equipped with an air cleaner. Dust and dirt from the air are removed in three steps. First, as it enters the top of the cleaner, the air is drawn down through louvers, which give it a whirling motion, forcing some of the dust outward so that it is expelled through slots outside the cleaner intake pipe. Then, at the bottom of the air intake pipe is a cup containing oil. The action of the incoming air forces most of the oil up onto the screen baffles, which are built around the intake pipe. The air bubbles through the oil foam on the baffles, thus removing any remaining dirt before it passes into the engine. But all this works only when the oil in the cleaner is sufficiently clean to remove the dirt from the air. It takes only a few hours of dusty operation to make the bottom of the air cleaner look like this. And when the oil in the cleaner is so saturated with dirt, it loses its efficiency, and some of the dust finds its way into the engine, causing avoidable wear to highly polished piston and cylinder surfaces. So to prevent needless repairs and replacements, check the air cleaner frequently, and clean it and refill when necessary. If you take this simple precaution, even the most dusty conditions can't harm your tractor engine. So, clean fuel, clean air, and now clean water. Water that's free from impurities. Water looks pretty much the same no matter what part of the country it comes from. But actually, there's a big difference. And to the cooling system of an engine, some water is good, some very bad. Because some water is hard and some soft. Hard water contains minerals, which form a lime deposit on the walls of the cooling system. Here we see in cross-section an engine in which untreated hard water is being used. Notice how the lime builds up on the walls of the cooling compartment. The action here is much speeded up, but actually, under some conditions, deposits like this will collect in just a few hours of operation. And it takes only a very thin coating of the deposits to cause the engine to overheat. To better understand the heat-resistant qualities of lime deposit, let us conduct an experiment. First, we take a thin piece of metal on which there is one thirty-second of an inch of lime deposit, the same kind of deposit that forms in your engine. On top of this, we place a thermometer. Next, we take another thin piece of metal, exactly like the first, except that there is no lime on it. And on top of it, we place a block of iron three inches thick and another thermometer. An equal amount of heat is applied beneath the lime deposit and beneath the iron block. Now let's see what happens. The temperature begins to rise. Both thermometers register approximately the same amount of heat, proving that one thirty-second of an inch of lime deposit in your cooling system is just as bad as though your cooling system were coated inside with three inches of cast iron. And there's bound to be trouble if the deposit is not removed. So use soft water if you can, or water that's been treated. And if you've any doubt, wash out the cooling system regularly using a solution of five parts muriatic acid, one part formaldehyde, and 48 parts of water. 
Before the mixing operation is begun, the engine should be started and it should be left running to bring the liquid in the cooling system to operating temperature. Then the engine is stopped and the water drained out. The drain is closed and the flushing solution poured into the radiator. The engine is started again and allowed to run. Now let's watch the dissolving action of the solution. Three hours later, the lime deposit has dissolved completely. The engine is stopped again, the solution drained out, the system flushed with clean water, refilled, and it's ready to go again. Clean fuel, clean air, and water that's free from impurities. But there are a number of other things which are equally important. For example, after every 10 hours of operation, the flywheel clutch release bearing should be lubricated. The steering clutch release bearings. The starting engine clutch and pinion levers. The track rollers. and the track roller frame inner bearings. The transmission oil level should be checked. Then every 30 to 60 hours, there's the crankcase to be filled. The fuel filter to be washed. And the crankcase oil filter. And as the hours of operation roll up, the breather element should be washed and oiled. There are minor adjustments to be made, such as the flywheel clutch, the steering clutch and brake adjustments, the valve clearance, and the track tension adjustment. These and other things you will profit by doing at just the right time. But it is all contained in your operator's instruction book, clearly, simply stated. For Caterpillar equipment is the finest and the easiest to take care of that engineering and long experience can provide. And Caterpillar Tractor Company is doing everything possible to help you get the most out of your equipment. So if you will protect your investment by giving your tractor the care it deserves, you will get many thousands of hours of economical, trouble-free operation. That's why we say, it's up to you.